Happy Friday and happy September, everyone. We have made it to September, and while the temperatures may not scream fall quite yet, (laughs) we are definitely getting there. And we've talked about this on the last episode, but I think Kate and I are both so ready for fall and all Mm -hmm. the things that it's going to be bringing to us that aren't summer. Don't judge me, but I already put up like half my fall decorations. (laughs) No is, it ha- is it Halloween yet in your house? <laughs> Not yet. I didn't go that far, but I did put up like some pumpkin stuff and like, I don't know, just like a little fall decor. Like I changed the wreath, my front door. I'm so, I'm so basic. <laughs> what, when Kate, when Kate changes her wreath on her front door, that's the sign that that's, it's a, sign not of summer fall. that's a sign to get rid of the humidity, please. Kate put a wreath on her front door that has fall leaves on it. Something isn't latching right now. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) But one of the other amazing things that's happening this fall as well is Triple Seed's own event camp conference for hospitality and sales professionals. Woohoo. Yeah, we announced it yesterday, um, which if you're listening to this on Friday would have been a couple days ago, but event camp is back in person at Zuma in New York City on October 26th. And also online with virtual tickets, we have both options. So whatever you're comfortable mm-hmm. with, but triple C customers in non triple C customers are welcome to attend and you can get your tickets now and learn more about what to expect on our event camp website, which is triple seat event camp.com. Really excited. And- we have some great people joining us um, this time around, like awesome speakers and I feel like it's a little cheaper than it normally is because of, you know, the pandemic and everything that that's brought the hospitality industry. Um, and I think I'm feeling very safe, like about it because New York is, is requiring, um, like we're going to wear masks and pretty sure you have to be vaccinated. Is that true? Yeah. I just make that up. Yeah. No, okay. Cause it's like <laughs> at Zuma, since Zuma is in New York city, then they're requiring right. the, the <clears throat> vaccination proof, like all venues mm-hmm. and restaurants are in New York city. I think that's, I mean, I think that's going to make it a lot safer and um, everyone can just enjoy themselves and have a good time. I'm really excited. I'm excited too. Hey, you may (laughs) see yours truly, the two chicks over here. Yeah, maybe we might be moderating a session um, or not. We're interviewing somebody that we actually had on the podcast before. um, So we're really excited about that. It's going to be awesome. Yay. Yay. Two chicks live. (laughs) (laughs) Two chicks live. Two Two chicks, chicks, three seats, literally live. (laughs) On the road, the on the road version. Yes, we're taking it on the road. (laughs) Yeah, so we hope to see everyone there, all of our listeners. But so for this episode, we're going to be chatting about some interesting things that we've been reading about and learning about from the hospitality industry recently. So you want to kick us off, Kate? Sure. Well, we might as well start off with our favorite topic, which is food. Well, I mean, cocktails sometimes, but I'll talk about those after. Um, (laughs) But food and what's trending in the kitchen right now. Um, We read a really interesting article from Bon Appetit um, that looked at the 10 most popular recipes. And this was of August of this year, 2021. Um, And some things were a bit surprising um, to the article writers and also to us. Um, they found that comfort food, which normally takes over in the cooler fall months um, and winter for that, you know, for that fact, um, was basically all of the most popular dishes in the list for August. I think everyone's kind of reaching for fall right now. <laughs> um, and comfort food season has started way earlier than normal this year. And even though temperatures have been, especially in the Northeast and in the West, like over the top, hot and humid, like way more warm than it normally is. So um, we think the comfort food trend is only going to continue on. So let's talk about some of the favorites in the list. Um, So there was classic banana pudding, which is one of my favorite desserts ever. I also like banana cream pie. That wasn't on the list, but I'm a big banana cream pie fan. (laughs) Um, Sweet potato crits, which I want to make immediately. That sounds delicious. Um, peach pie, which was interesting. I feel like that is a very August thing though. Like it is right. comforting, but peaches, like, especially around our area are definitely riper in the summer, um, end of summer mozzarella fritters with pesto and greens, which I feel like this is half comfort, half very summer because the pesto and the greens, but the mozzarella fritter part is like very comfort food. Um, cinnamon roll pound cake, which also sounded amazing and caramelized pork and cucumber stir fry. Um, I love that we're a lot of these recipes are mixing the comfort food aspect with summer like staples like cucumber. So, um, that sounded delicious. And then it also looked forward to the fall. So what can we expect for comfort foods this fall? Obviously chili is a big one for football Sundays, um, in Mondays, sometimes this Saturday. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> thrown in. I love chili. Uh, I make it like once a week in the fall and winter. So I'm really excited. I need your, I need your recipe. I feel like I'm a hit or miss sometimes. Sometimes I just okay. get sick of it. You know, I will, to be honest with you, I will definitely give you a recipe, but my recipe is like, I just throw a bunch of shit in there and then I keep tasting it. But I think some of the things that are in my chili might surprise you. So I will share that okay. with you. I am not sharing it with everyone though. <laughs> Oh, I'm special. <laughs> I already made it once. It was really chilly last weekend for one day. And I made it because I was like, I am craving chili. So anyways, it was delicious. Um, baked mac and cheese, which is another favorite. And I have a really good baked vegan mac and cheese recipe. That, you know. I was just going to say that, Kate. Like, as you keep reading through these things, are we still keeping up this vegan <laughs> lifestyle coming into dining in the fall? I mean, yeah. I The chili I made last weekend had um, like soy meat in it. And it was freaking delicious. So, and I used soy cheese instead of regular cheese and I didn't have any sour cream. So, um, but it was still super good. So yeah, I think I will. I think I'm going to extend this, um, braised short ribs. Obviously I can't eat, but that sounds amazing. (laughs) Meatloaf is like one of my, that was one of my most favorite things to eat when I was, wasn't eating vegan, especially in the fall and winter. Cause it's so easy, but it's delicious. And you can really make it taste like anything you want it to taste like, especially (laughs) you can use like ground Turkey and ground or ground beef or a mixture. Um, so you can use ground chicken done that. It's really good. Obviously apple pie and apple crisp are some definitely notable fall ones that I also, I love, and there's really good, like healthier recipes for that as well. That still gets that comfort food factor in and then sweeps and chowders. Um, we a big one too. So it's going to be exciting to see restaurants coming out with their new fall menus and start to post about them on social media. I'm really looking forward to that. You know, that the coffee shops always go first with all of the pumpkin flavored things, which I'm honestly, like, I'm not really into that. Like, I'm not, I You're like not? coffee. Well, I like coffee strong. So like mm-hmm. once in a while I'll get that, um, that c- pumpkin cold brew thing from Starbucks, right. but I, and it's not vegan cause I can't make it vegan. So I just like splurge once in a while, but I always get it without the vanilla, like pump of vanilla in it. And I add a shot of espresso. So it's like, so you're really basically strong. changing the full drink. <laughs> basically the only thing I get is like the pumpkin. I might basically get like the pumpkin seasoning in the, in the cold brew mixture, but their pumpkin, um, like syrup has dairy in it. So that's why that they cannot make that vegan they can use like um almond milk cold brew foam but the actual syrup isn't vegan so just gotcha. FYI to anyone out there who didn't know that um <laughs> but then also fall cocktails and we all know that fall cocktails are my favorite I talk about this all the time because bourbon's my favorite and bourbon is such a fall um spirit I mm-hmm. think so like think um last year I feel like on cocktails with Kate and James last year at like around this time it was late September we made um Manhattans and I made one that had like all spice seasoning in it. So I love Manhattans and you can, and they're very fall, but you can always make them like a little more fall with like certain bitters or like maybe like orange peel or whatever. Um, and also sangria is a great fall cocktail, um, idea, especially if you mix in, like if you make cinnamon simple syrup and mix that in with it, or if you add like the flavors that you add, you know, the fruit, the type of fruit you add and all those things make make a cocktail fall. It's not, you know, you can also, I had recipes for like, um, pumpkin sangria, which sounds weird, but it was really good when I tried to make it. So yeah. So fall cocktails, I feel like it's just got that spice feeling, you know, and also the fall beers. I love fall beer. I know I said, I'm not a big fall. Like I'm not a big, like pumpkin coffee drinker, but I love pumpkin beer. (laughs) Like love it. And it's weird because I really love, like, I'm a big, like IPA drinker. So one wouldn't think, and I don't normally like fruity beers. Like I don't like the blueberry beer. I don't like sours. I'm not into those, but pumpkin beer. I love, maybe it's just the fact that when you're drinking it, it's usually chilly outside and you're like eating a bowl of chili as well. (laughs) Maybe sitting by a bonfire. We're really setting an aesthetic right now. (laughs) Can you guys tell how much I love fall? Like I, I love summer for like two months and then come August. I'm like, I am ready. I love winter too. So I'm, I'm that girl on TikTok that made that video that was like, aren't I so weird because I love fall? It's not that weird. There are millions of people out there who love fall. So I'm not weird. You know what? (laughs) That was obnoxious. I think we're just true New Englanders. We appreciate it. We are. We are. When it ends, we're ready for the new season and everything springs. It's so funny because I just reminded myself of that. There's a comedian who makes those videos like girl who thinks loving fall is weird. 
Who is it? Trey Kennedy? <laughs> no, it's not. It's a girl and she's hysterical and I can't remember her name, but she makes videos and she's like, girl who thinks fall is weird. And she's like, yeah, I know you love summer, but like fall is my favorite. I know I'm so weird. <laughs> Cause it's not weird. It's not weird at all. <laughs> not weird. It's okay. Damn to have it. a different opinion, girl. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So anywho, <laughs> not weird, completely normal. I love fall moving on Rachel. <laughs> Take it from here. On that note, Kate, <laughs> 10 out of 10 transition. Yep. Um, yep. <laughs> okay. So the next thing that we were reading about, and I feel like is pretty important right now for lots of everyone and even us who are planning a event right now. So this article is a biz bash, biz bash article called five practical tips for instituting a vaccine mandate at your next meeting. So this, like I said, is a biz bash article that came out recently, but more and more businesses are making vaccination a requirement to attend their venues, especially in New York city where restaurants, bars, gyms, and other private businesses are all asking for vaccine cards upon entry. The fact that these businesses that often host events that are requiring vaccination actually could hopefully be helpful for people that are planning events. So for example, like we said before, Zuma in New York, where we're planning the event, they require proof of vaccination. So hopefully that makes it easier for us. And yeah. so we don't have to worry about, you know, the Karens showing up being like, <laughs> I, you know, making a whole stink about vaccine Fine. requirements when we're like, okay, it's not us. It's the city of New York and their venues that are making mm-hmm. these decisions. So, I mean, hopefully that's a little bit helpful, but it's still a tricky topic because obviously we know that vaccines and everything is like, a you go one way or the other. And right. so- there's no in between there's There's no no in between between. but this article gives some tips so hopefully you can be able to uphold having a vaccine mandate at your next event so the first tip they say is communication is key so it's you should be clearly communicating protocols well in advance that means giving at least a four-week notice about uh regulations whether it be with masks on on the premise or with vaccination so that you give people time to plan and prepare Mm -hmm. So in this article, specifically, they were describing how for a venue, the first set of regulations from this venue was announced on August 17th, that they had to have proof of one vaccine by September 13th. So, you know, that's about four weeks. And then they would have to have proof of full vaccination status shown by October 4th. So I've seen this for a couple different venues, too. They're (laughs) saying that in the end, they're going to have full proof of vaccination be required to enter, but then they're giving a little bit of time for the full status and they'll accept you if you're only half vaccinated up until a certain date. So that's, you know, giving some people time to get their vaccines all finished. Yeah. And I think it's just the importance is being clear and communicative and giving a notice. So there's no excuse for people to feel like they're caught off guard or unprepared because you've been vocal about this, posting it, whatever you may need to do True. communicating with your clients. So the next piece of advice that they, that they say is to offer a hybrid option for guests who prefer to stay at home. We're doing this for event camp as well. So we have the in-person option, but then we also have the hybrid option. And I mean, we've talked about virtual events and hybrid events for the past year and a half, but hybrid events are not going anywhere. They're here to stay, but they are going to be a solution for a lot of these challenges because Mm -hmm. if someone's refusing to get vaccinated or they just don't feel safe, even attending an in-person event, but they still want to be part of it, then they'll have this hybrid option. And I think it's also interesting for venues too, because they could be adjusting some of their event packages because maybe they didn't have such a hybrid, um, hybrid, like a need for hybrid events beforehand, but now they're really seeing this need for it. I think we've we've talked about in the past too, just how events, event venues maybe had to step up with their AV and what they needed for hybrid events so that they could have those offerings. So Mm -hmm. I think that's just interesting to see hybrid events are probably going to be heavier and more, um, more seen than in the past. Yeah. The third tip that this article says is for larger events, consider checking vaccination statuses ahead of time and not at the door. So the main way that restaurants and other businesses who are requiring proof of vaccination are checking is upon entry. So that normally means electronic proof, which a lot of, like, I know my friends in New York city, they all have their vaccine cards on their phone because they have, there's that app in New York yeah. or else restaurants are asking for vaccine cards upon entry at the door with your physical vaccine card, along with a photo ID, which is just, you know, for a standard one person walking into a restaurant, that's fine. And that'll, it's basically like, you're just checking with the bouncer, show the vaccine card, show the ID. That's just how it works now. Um, so funny. 
But for the big events, they're suggesting to set up a check vaccination proof ahead of time so that you don't have to be, you know, having that hold up at the door. And this could be part of the registration process. There's all sorts of registration uh, sites and everything now that have you check off your status. And I don't know how they do it, but somehow it's like, it, it knows that you're vaccinated. It has your information out there in the World Wide Web. So <laughs> those are just some systems that you could be putting into place so that it's a smooth entrance upon arriving at the venue. And then the last, there's two more. So the last, the fourth one is pay attention to local laws and regulations. Obviously things are changing state by state, depending, you know, the North is way different than the South, yeah. and <laughs> East Coast, West Coast, things are changing everywhere. So mm-hmm. it's just important to understand the rules because you could be planning an event in one city, but then you're from a different city. So the rules could change drastically depending where you are. So that's just important to be aware of. And then the fifth thing that they say is that you're just going to lose some attendees. So be prepared to lose some attendees and that's okay. Because yeah. like we said before, it's not an easy subject. Some people are very against the vaccine, but obviously other people are very pro the vaccine. So I think, yeah, you may get some people complaining, but ultimately you're going to get people who are saying, thank you for instilling this. I feel comfortable attending this event because of the fact that you are taking the time to require proof of vaccination and look out for the safety of your attendees, employees, guests, everyone involved. So I think overall it's, it's good feedback and it's a good thing. So everyone can feel safe going. Yeah, I agree. And and like, I mean, losing attendees, like at least losing a few attendees is better than having to shut it down completely. Like people had to do last year. So right. I think, you know, it's a win for sure. Um, but yeah. And then they, you can just be like, if you don't feel, you know, if you don't want to come because you're not vaccinated, then that's why we did hybrid or right. virtual. Um, so yeah, I think that's great. Well, on to kind of like a sad note, but also happy <laughs> a little bit of both. Um, so obviously everyone's been seeing on the news or you might live there, um, New Orleans, New Orleans and the wake of hurricane Ida, which oddly came exactly 16 years after Katrina, like on the same day. So weird. Really? I didn't know that. Yeah. Yes. It hit the same day that hurricane Katrina hit 16 years later. Also, it's insane to me that hurricane Katrina was 16 years ago. I yeah. feel like, I, I mean, those poor people must feel like it literally was yesterday, but like I, right. for some reason in my head, I'm like 16 years. Like I thought my son was alive when Hurricane Katrina hit. Like it's so. Not at all, Kate. No, not even <laughs> close. close. I didn't, I hadn't even met my husband yet. Like 16 years ago. It's crazy. Um, also crazy. That's the same day. But with that said, um, it hit, you know, uh, Louisiana as, as a whole and some other Southern states too, early this week, leaving a lot of damage and, you know, loss of power. Um, no one can get gas. There's no food. It's, it's mayhem. Um, and this specific New Orleans Eater article um, that we're going to discuss talks about how anyone listening now or reading the article themselves can help those in need and specifically some things that are happening within the hospitality community in New Orleans. Is it New Orleans or New Orleans? What do you say? I say Is New Orleans, both? but say I keep hearing you say New Orleans. It's I know. New Orleans. <laughs> Thank you. Why do I say that? Like I don't know. I don't know either. Where did that come from? I feel like I feel like I recently watched something on TV and they were like New Orleans. And I was like, that's weird. That's not right. (laughs) (laughs) Now I'm saying it. (laughs) New Orleans. (laughs) Um, So local organizations like Imagine Waterworks, um, Culture Aid NOLA, and El Pueblo NOLA are working to provide all sorts of aid and resources to the community. Also, World Central Kitchen and Second Harvest Food Bank are feeding residents by um, operations out of food trucks to distribute meals and water. I think we've talked about World Central Kitchen before on the podcast, um, but they're a nonprofit organization that was founded by Chef Jose Andres to provide meals to those impacted by natural disasters. I've also seen them at times on the news lately I think that they were doing something to help um to help the people in Haiti um yeah that that was like all over the news lately so they go everywhere um they're not just in the United States um but they also offer programs to help individuals and small businesses access safer and cleaner cooking solutions for their homes and businesses along with many other programs that involve promoting sustainability and culinary training so it's a really great organization um, and members of the hospitality community that have been involved with World Central Kitchen. And so in, <laughs> in New Orleans, <laughs> I don't know why it's made me laugh. They say they are looking for volunteers with service industry experience for helping with community feeding efforts. And I think there are a ton of people in New Orleans who have hospitality experience because there is a large portion of people that move there from other parts of the country to work in restaurants and bars and nightclubs and stuff like that. So 
if you're a chef or a former chef, uh, World Central Kitchen is looking for your skills in these volunteering efforts as well. And we will link the sign up page that has more information um, on volunteering with World Central Kitchen. But um, they're a great organization and they really they help people all over the world. So um, it's pretty awesome. But still on the same topic, but from a different article from a local um, New Orleans news outlet discusses how the hospitality community has been stepping up there. So restaurants have been giving away resources to the locals in need because many have lost, you know, almost everyone has lost power and they're unable to serve and operate right now. It's pretty crazy. Um, but also a local bakery called Mayhew Bakery turned its building into a community aid spot. So they're distributing free essentials from diapers and dog food to coffee and other items. So that's pretty awesome. La Boca, um, an Argentine steakhouse staff, braised all the beef they could, cooked down vegetables and dished out plates for free. So that's also pretty amazing. They also went through all the food in about 15 minutes, serving 150 meals on the fly. So it's pretty awesome. Um, and other local businesses were packaging up donated supplies and food to hand out to those who needed, you know, needed things as well. So acts like this were happening all over the city and the hospitality community was a big part of it all and really stepped up to help everybody. Just another show of how amazing the hospitality industry is. In New Orleans. <laughs> Good job. It just brings me back to the beginning of COVID. Remember when all the restaurants were stepping in and people were mm-hmm. donating things and food and meals were being prepared. I don't know. It just gives me those sort of feel good. It's yeah. obviously it's a tra- it's a tragedy, but then you always have the feel good stories that come out of it and the community coming together. I feel like that's what happened all at the beginning of COVID in the hospitality industry, which is pretty special to see too. Yeah, I agree. It's um it's all pretty amazing. And we hope the best for those people. I donated, um, you could donate money too. There was, um, there was a hospitality group that was asking for money to help support like their local community. So we donated, um, money to them as well. So there's all, like, you can look on the internet. There's all these different things that you can do to help people in need down there. Um, so yeah, so I feel awful. I'm so grateful that we don't live in a place. I mean, we get blizzards, but You know, when we get, I feel like when we get hurricanes, it's not nothing. There's nothing like what they get down there. So, um, yeah, we get afraid. We get like a tornado warning and it's like, everyone's like in the basement freaking out. And then like, literally it touches down once, like in a field. (laughs) And then it just (laughs) rains. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And we just get rain and snow. So, I mean, snow is, snow is tough for people who aren't used to snow. Like I get that. It can be debilitating for people who aren't used to it, but I feel like for us, it's like, oh, we got another eight inches. <laughs> oh, another 12 inches. Well, we got two feet. <laughs> Can't inside. see out the windows. Oh, well. <laughs> what does my backyard look like again? <laughs> oh, my God. That's oh, the, the worst is when that happens like into April and you're like, come on. And now right now I'm complaining about the heat. Right. But like also in April, you complain about the cold. So we're, we're always get, complaining. We'll, we'll get there. We're just a lot of complaining here in New England. <laughs> That's what happens when you get all four seasons. <laughs> Seriously. There's always something you want more. <laughs> um, okay. So the last article that we have, mm-hmm. just a little quick one to wrap it up, but it's an open table article called how to easily navigate dining out with changing safety regulations. And I feel like this is just relevant to everyone right now because yeah. everything is changing. No one knows anything. It's it just, just keeps <laughs> every day is a new surprise. Every weekend you go mm-hmm. out, every restaurant you go to, it's going to be different, but That being said, it's obviously challenging right now because of all these changes, but this could be, you know, some people could be intimidated if you're not used to going out and about, or if you're just wanting to step out for the first time. So this article gives a couple tips on how to prepare. So you should always be traveling with your vaccination card. If you have one physically or digitally in your phone, if you're in a city that has an app like that, like we were saying before, New York does a lot of other cities do too. Yep. I don't even know if Boston does. I should probably look into that, but uh, <clears throat> not all restaurants are going to ask for proof of vaccine, but it's better to be safe than sorry and have it on you just in case you are asked for it. And, you know, they, they are accepting most of the time having the proof on the electronic app or with the physical card with your photo ID, but you would need to have both of those um, if you're showing your photo ID with the Vax card. So you should also be looking at what your own city requires. Your city's COVID page should have the latest local requirements for dining out. So just be sure to check back for new updates. Mm-hmm. So for some examples in New York City, you must show proof of at least one vaccine shot beginning on August 16th. They started this, inclu- which could include the CDC vaccine card, a photo or digital version. In Montreal, they had their starting yesterday, September 1st. 
San Francisco was August 20th. So I think all these deadlines are coming out where you're going to have to be showing the card. So have it on you at all times and you'll have a good experience. And do you, you think, do you think that Boston's going to do something like this? Like, do you see it coming? I know that they, well, now they require masks inside. Yes. Um, but I've been hearing that. I mean, I guess it'll probably vary on the restaurants, but they started that two weeks ago, or they started on Friday. And I know mm-hmm. people that were out on Saturday and it wasn't really being enforced. Gotcha. So it could change. I'm definitely seeing masks much more around the city, just walking. I know, I I think the CDC is saying, even if you're vaccinated or not vaccinated, it's safe to wear a mask now with Mm -hmm. the Delta variant. So I could see it happening with Boston too, like having to be requiring the mask, I mean, the vaccine cards, which Mm -hmm. I will gladly do. I think I just want to download the app and just have it on me. Yeah, be way easier. a little flimsy card that's just- Well, because it's like, you're right, because it is flimsy and you can't, you can't laminate it because you're going to have to get another one. So, and probably another one, another one, another one. So you don't want to do that either. Um, People are going to start selling like- vaccine card holders they, they already are my mom oh, are they? oh my god that's so funny yeah. it's probably the same size as like some of the um like lanyard things that right. you wear like in offices and stuff so maybe right. i don't know but of but course yeah. it's not the same size that could fit in like a standard wallet it's no not. of course like, not. no it does not fit size of, a, of a credit card that would have yeah. been so much easier yep i know i yeah my husband can't even find his he needs to get his booster soon because and he works in the hospital Luckily he works in a hospital because they can just print him a new card because that's right. where he got it. But um he needs to get his booster next month and he's like, I can't find my card. I'm like, what'd you do with it? It's like, I don't know. Oh god. You're setting a good example, <laughs> nurse Mike. No kidding. <laughs> um, uh, but then the last quick piece from this article, obviously it's an open table article. And I mean, we do book with open table a lot. I did yesterday, but within open table, they do have the ability to directly message with the restaurant. So you can oh, ask questions yourself or they have um, the restaurant's latest safety protocols are also on a restaurant's open table profile. So you can look there. I like always look on uh, the, or the website or I don't know, my friends in New York, they always like, will call ahead just to like see, just mm-hmm. to be sure um, they're all vaccinated, but just in case. I'm yeah. sure, I feel like they post on Instagram restaurants are probably posting it too on Facebook. So you could be checking those places, especially when it comes to, you know, planning events. And if you're going to be having multiple people coming from different places, mm-hmm. may have different, they don't know necessarily what it's required there because they don't live there. Right. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. It's all, smart. All it's really smart. Just keep checking. I feel like every, like we said, everywhere is different and you should just check and see it's it's very strange here in new um in new hampshire especially southern new hampshire because i feel like we are so close to massachusetts and there are a lot of tourists to come here because we're on the ocean so it's it's like it went i feel like overnight it went from like nobody wearing masks and like grocery stores and everything to like like and and i just like i'll put one on if there's a sign at the door that says we highly recommend you wear one like even if you're vaccinated i'm like sharp i don't care but sometimes I just forget because I don't have them on me anymore. Like I used right. to, just, oh, I used to have like three for each child, three for myself, three for my husband, just like in my bag at all times. And now they're just like everywhere. I almost threw them all out. Good thing I didn't. But um, <laughs> and just like I sometimes I'm like, well, I don't have any. And then I feel weird because I'm the only person in the store not wearing a mask. I'm like, but you didn't say you had to. <laughs> <laughs> I had, no, I had to buy more. I literally had to buy a new box of the disposable ones because they were like, I just stopped wearing them and bringing them with me. So yeah. I had to restock. Yeah. I don't know. I think it's just interesting now because obviously we're not at the same point that we were at last year. So restaurants aren't closing. That's not right. happening. But I think, I'm, I don't know. I feel like I was reading something where they were talking about like, is this just going to be the new normal that restaurants are just going to have to, we're just going to, it's not going to go away. No, 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 have to not figure out how to soon. live with it. And so if right. that's the case, then restaurants are just going to keep having to do this with the requiring vaccine status, masks. I mean, it's just the only solution right now. If you want yeah. to be going into a restaurant to dine or outside the restaurant, but just even anything at the restaurant that isn't takeout. Right. And if you look at like, I mean, if you like look at the history and like look at past pandemics, like the the flu pandemic, and it wasn't over in a year. I mean, people, they got, you know, they ended up getting vaccinations and, but then people were wearing masks for like a long time. And the difference was that we didn't socialize in these large places like we do now. There was no technology. There was, you know, there wasn't any of these things like, like trans, like buses and all like flying places and it was just obviously way different. So um, I think that that's, that's the issue that we're trying to like deal with now is like, what do you, 
what do you do? You know, you want right. to keep, want to keep everything open, but in order to do that, like how far do you go for, with the mandates and how many people you piss off and don't piss off from either side? <laughs> uh, I have a feeling here in New Hampshire, they're not ever going to bring back like a mandated government mask mandate, I, unless the, the country has one, but like, right. I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. We're fairly this like New Hampshire tends to lean conservative, mm-hmm. um, in the north, especially in the northern areas. So I do feel like, and those are the largest areas. So I feel like, I feel like there's no chance that they're going to like mandate them. So right, it's right. basically they're leaving it up to towns. So each town is different. Um, but we'll we'll see. My my son has to wear one in school, which I'm 100 percent okay with. <laughs> yeah, they <laughs> do something- they do that in my hometown too. Yeah. I don't know. So, I mean, if you're listening and you're at a restaurant and you have like an opinion or you want to talk mm-hmm. about how it's been going for you, definitely reach out to us. Our email is two chicks, three seats at triple seat.com. We'd love to hear from you and, you know, just hear how everything's going. Take a little pulse check, temperature check yeah. on what things are, have been like. Yeah. And if you have like an interesting story, story to tell, even, you know, about the pandemic or about anything else in the hospitality industry, let us know. We'll, we'd love to have you on the show. We love having our listeners in the show. It makes it more interesting. People don't like to just listen to us. <laughs> hey, they, they still do. <laughs> Some people do. <laughs> My annoying laugh and the way I say New Orleans. New Orleans. <laughs> oh, well, thanks for listening. If you made it this far. <laughs> yeah, if you made it this far. <laughs> we'll talk to you all next week. Thanks for listening. Have a great week. Mm-hmm.